Now, after we do all this stuff, any questions? Since you've had the introduction to integrals, we can now talk about some more advanced concepts. It's a little bit better. I think it's funner. You might not think so at first, but you will. I promise. I'll brainwash you. I've been looking forward to this my whole life. Integration by substitution. Here's the point behind integration by substitution. What you're doing is trying to make a difficult integral easier. Remember from when I first told you this was not a lie. In order to do an integral, it must fit in your integration table. Do you remember that? It has to. If it doesn't, you cannot do it. It's got to fit. So, what we try to do is either manipulate the inside of our integral somehow by distributing or dividing. Remember like you did on your, hopefully you started your homework. Uh, you do this, manipulate trig functions, do all that, and make it fit somehow. <clears throat> what this is called, by the way, is a U substitution. So we'll be using the letter U. Let me give you a for instance on why we have this. <coughs> And it's all about this problem. Write down that problem we'll talk about in a second. Um, but firstly, ladies and gentlemen, does that problem fit your integration table exactly like it is? No. no. Oh, it's got some parentheses, got some stuff being multiplied. Knowing what you know right now, how would you do that? Sure. And then it'd be fairly easy, right? Mm. It'd actually be very easy. How about that? Mm -hmm. yeah, a little bit long. You could, right? You could, though. Yeah, still do you could foil it out three times and then distribute your 2x, and you could do it. There's someone with a like that. Not is that fun. something you want to do? Yeah. Only if you're crazy. <laughs> that's when yeah. you don't do the homework. <laughs> yeah. That's when you go, Mr. Leonard, you, did not, you failed me. You didn't teach me right. <laughs> There's got to be a better way. And the better way is this does not fit your integration table. <laughs> For some of you who think this is possible, it's not. You can't distribute this in there, okay? You can't do that. That's an exponent. The only thing you would you have fault or operations, right? Exponents before multiplication. You have to do all that. I could teach you binomial expansion, but you'd be at the 50th row of Pascal's triangle with some eh, pretty easy stuff, but still, it would be it'd be longer than the sport before you were done. Okay, it'd be crazy. Now, we're gonna learn something different called integration by substitution. What it's going to allow us to do is substitute part of our integral for the letter U, thereby making a really hard integral really, really easy. You want to see how to do it? Mm -hmm. Of course, because it makes your life easier. I'm saving your life. I'm literally saving your life. That would take you like a year. It's going to take us two minutes. See, I've saved you however many minutes are on a year, minus two. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Here's your steps. The first thing you're going to do is pick U so that the integral is easier. I know that's vague. I know it's vague, but I'll give you some notes on that. You're trying to pick U so the integral is easier, not harder. Sometimes you'll pick the wrong U. It's okay. You'll know it in 10 seconds or less. Seriously. Pick U so the integral is easier. Yeah. Yes, you can pick U so that it becomes harder. You don't want to do that. You, but you'll know it. It's, you'll get stuck. Here's two big hints. <clears throat> it's usually, the it's usually, get it, U, usually? Uh, it's usually the inside of something. It's usually the inside of something. And here's a must-have. 
The derivative is somewhere in the integral. The derivative of your u is somewhere in your integral already. Okay? Disregarding constants. The constants don't matter. I'll teach you how to do stuff without constants. But the derivative, as far as the x's go, must be an integral. No, I'm just going to leave it to you. <laughs> of that confuses me. <laughs> it's got to be an integral somewhere. Also, make a note: this is, this does not include constants. You don't really care so much about the constants. Disregard constants. Second step, that's where all the work happens, by the way. Second step, third step, fourth step, very easy. Uh, second step is we're going to transform our integral from x dx to u du. So translate our x's to u's, our du, dx's to du's. Remember how your d whatever has to match your variable? If I'm going to put some u's up there, I can't have a dx anymore. That's not going to happen. I need to have a du. So I'm going to teach you how to do that too. Transform something in terms of x dx to something in terms of u du. After that, it will be an integration table. If it's not, you have to do another substitution or something else, or the integral is not possible using these methods. There are some that are not possible, and you can't do them. Or you can't do them with this, you need integration by parts, or a trig substitution, or it's got to be in a table. There's things that we can't do in this class, all right? Well, we, we get to skim the surface. Step three will be solve your integral, so do integral. And step four, notice what's, what's happened here. I, I know it's very vague because I haven't shown you an example, but I, I need you to think through it, okay, with me. You're picking u. U's gonna take the place of some x. Do you get that concept? Mm -hmm. It can take the place of some x. Therefore, when you go from dx to du, we got that down, then we're gonna do our integral. But you're still gonna be in terms of u, so you need to translate it back into terms of x. Does that make sense? You gotta end with whatever variable you start with. So translate back to u. I, I think I said you on that X. Translate back to X. Okay, now for the good stuff. I'll show you how to do this problem. Now, what's the bad part in this integral? What's the bad part? Is the 2X a bad part? No. Not really. What's the bad part? The 2 to 50. <laughs> Probably this part, right? That part. Now, when you're doing a U substitution, Oftentimes, you don't pick the whole thing, you pick the inside thing. You cover it up and you go, okay, if, I, if this were a u, could I still take the integral? And then here's what you do. You go, if this was a u, can you take the integral of u to the 50th? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So don't take this as your integral, take just, I'm sorry, as your u, take just this little part. Here's why you take just that little part. You're going to have to take a derivative of this. You have to. So you want something where you take a derivative and it doesn't completely jack your problem up because you're going to have to put it back in your integral. Here's what we're talking about. I'm going to pick usually the inside and it has to be such that the derivative is in your integral somewhere. So, derivative of this. You can do the derivative of that, right? Yeah. Take the derivative of that. What is it? 2x. Is 2x in your integral? Yeah. It's going to work. No, it's going to work. If it's now, if this was your u, your derivative would be 50 x squared plus 1 to the 49th power times 2x. Is that in your integral? No, that would be the wrong way to go. Here's why it has to be in your integral. You can see this in about 45 seconds. u equals x squared plus 1. Are you okay with the u? We pick the inside of something, also the derivative has to match up with something in your integral. 
not necessarily the constants. Even if the two, look at, even if the two wasn't there, it would still be okay. The constant doesn't matter that much. Now, what you're going to need to do is take a derivative implicitly on both sides. So, if I take a derivative, the derivative of u is du. The derivative of this side is what? 2x. 2x and dx. By the way, here's y if you want to know the y, because it looks weird right now. Um, most, I, I guess most teachers don't show it this way, but I'll show you. If you took an integral with respect to x, what you get is du dx equals 2x, right? Mm -hmm. Solve for du. du equals 2x dx. That's what we get. We need to do that every time. So you give you du and dx on different sides so you can work it like that. If, you, if that makes sense to you, use that. Does it make sense to you? Mm -hmm. That would make sense to me. So. In either case, this is going to be du. This is going to be 2x dx. We should have to be okay with that so far. Now here's the cool part. We can do this like a double substitution. Not only are we going to substitute this part for some u, which we already are going to be able to do, but you can also substitute your dx if you can solve for dx. So can you solve this for dx? Yes. How do you solve this for dx? If I divide by 2x, by the way, I know I teach this different from some of you who have had calculus before. I teach it a little different. I think this works better uh, because you can actually see the simplification happen in this problem, okay? Are you still okay? You sure? So let me recap for a second. Uh, I guess it's more than 45 seconds, but now you'll see why you had to have your derivative somewhere in your integral. We look at this, we find the part that sucks. It's usually the inside of something, the derivative has to be there. Take that as your u. Take a derivative of both sides. You're going to get a du every time. That's going to happen. You're, you never have anything weird like 2u or 4u. You, that doesn't happen. Just take your derivative of u, you get du. Take your derivative of this side, you're going to get 2x and dx. Solve for dx. Raise your hand if you feel completely okay with this. Now you do the substitution. Instead of 2x plus 1, what do I put? Do I still have to the 50th power? Mm -hmm. yes. 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 This became my u to the 50th. Now check it out. My 2x is there, but what is my dx instead? Du. Du over what? 2x. Yes. U, 50th, 2x, dx. You got it? Hey, look at the two x's. Is one on numerator, one on denominator? Mm -hmm. This is basically like writing this. It's basically like writing 1 over 2x du, like that. Your two x's are gone. Gone. Integral of u to the 50th, du. Notice how we have to have, this is important, this is why I make you guys write the d. Some people do integrals, they don't write the dx, they don't write the du. Do you see why you have to have that? It tells you what variable you're integrating with respect to. So if you didn't change to du and still had dx, this is not possible. You can't do it. So we had to change that. We had to write the du. Now can you take the integral of u to the 50th? Everybody should go do this. What is it? Perfect. Actually, pretty easy. And? Let's see. Let's see. Right now, we're here. We're here. We translated. We're right here. you got to translate back into x. You see, we start with x's. We're now in terms of u. How much is your u? 